All right, we got two more features to build here. One is more of an extreme pondless waterfall. The last one will be a pretty typical pond built out of hand-sized boulders and just kind of show the whole 20 steps and revise that whole video and bring that thing up to the date. But today we're gonna work on a pondless waterfall and I brought some muscle over here. This is my nephew, Will, my son, Matthew. Hey, could you guys say hi? <laughs> you excited to get out of school for a day? Right behind me here, we're gonna put this in. I chose not to rip out the one we built yesterday because it looks so nice and why tear it apart if we don't need to and we needed a little bit more space to go extreme. So we're gonna kind of transform this whole area in here to a pondless waterfall using machine and muscle to get it done. So let's get this thing all figured out and we'll get started. So I think the first thing is the design. So coming up with kind of the location, like always, the view from inside the house matters most. We've got this great space over in here to work with. We've got a nice backdrop already with all those existing plants. The only thing this is lacking is some type of viewing area by the pondless area. So we'll have to bring in some kind of patio or something up next to it, maybe with a fire pit or who knows. But this corner really lends to it, so we're gonna bring it down from there. And uh, Chris and I are gonna go start tagging some boulders for that space. All right, we got nine aqua blocks chosen for this site. We went ahead, laid those out in here. We marked out the area. Now this man's gonna jump up into his favorite toy and start digging not that guy <laughs> this guy all right he's gonna get in there and start digging we're gonna dig down these things are 17 and a half inches deep we're actually gonna take them down probably closer to two feet which gives us more of a sunken look in here and it allows us to be a little bit more creative with the finished product on top of the aqua blocks we really want to use some massive boulders so we want room for those massive boulders even on the top of the aqua blocks especially on the patio or viewing side so next step is dig 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 We got our hole excavated. Aqua blocks are sitting off to the side. We have our indentation for our pump vault and that boot to go in there. And then I'll show you guys kind of how those aqua blocks sit in around that. This is never the fun part of building upon this waterfall, but getting that infrastructure done and getting it set right is really important. So when we're setting our boulders, it just becomes that much more easy. So you can see the bottom's pretty level. We've got that thing screened off pretty good. Next step is put a layer of fabric down, the liner, then fabric again. Just finished lunch. We've got everything we want done inside the reservoir. We're starting to set some boulders. Kids still have their Zoom calls. Underneath this pile of fabric and liner are our aqua blocks. We've got one of our waterfall stones all strapped up and ready to go. And so we're gonna start building this thing piece by piece. First rock is always the most fun. So Chris, we don't always listen to the consumers, you know, and the consumers have opinions on which rocks should go where, but these two picked out this rock and they both said they really want us to use it. So I see you being consumer friendly right now. <laughs> I mean, how can you not be? I mean, they're pretty... Pretty, uh -huh. pretty what? They're pretty what? intimidating. Pretty... <laughs> so I'm gonna do whatever they ask of me right now. All right, guys, we're setting this big rock for you. Help Chris strap it up, okay? <laughs> Every single time we try to do a water feature, we try to size the liner big enough so we don't have to do overlaps. But inevitably, almost every single time, we end up doing some type of overlap. And I think a lot of that falls on us because we keep pushing it further, pushing it further, pushing it further. We really could have stopped at this waterfall here, but Chris and I have decided to go up one more level here. Uh, I think it'll just look that much better, but we ran out of liner. So you can see here, this is our original liner right in here. And if I try to come up a little bit higher right here, there's no way I'm gonna have enough liner to pull this up high enough. So what we did is we grabbed another 15 by 10, tucked it in back behind that last waterfall we built there, pulled this back like so, 
and then backfill dirt up to it. So the key with doing an overlap is to make sure that this liner here is higher than the pool down below, about six inches higher. If I needed to build this up higher, I could, but you remember, I didn't want to build this up too much higher in here because then when I put gravel on top of this liner, it'd be above my weir stone or my waterfall stone coming and then it would look silly. So now that I've got it all packed in here, put some fabric down and then pull this thing back. So let's pull this back and you can see this liner here is higher than this here. Now, here's something I actually have to look at and double check with Chris. I'm not making sure that this liner here is higher than the liner down here. I want to make sure that that liner there is higher than that waterfall stone because water is going to pool up to this level here. You know, water is going to drop from here, drop down, fill up, and then spill over this. If this is higher than this area back here, we would get a leak because water is going to pool up and go out through that other liner. So we're going to have to put a level on there and check and may maybe even make some adjustments. But we'll look really quick. Our suspicions were correct. The liner back behind was only about an inch or two higher than our actual weir stone, waterfall stone in front of it. I've got Chris here measuring some stuff up. We just changed some stuff, but I'm gonna show you what we did. So hopefully you understand, and more importantly, don't make this mistake out in the field because a leak on a waterfall of this size, especially if it's an overlap, is not an easy thing to fix. You'd have to get the machine back out here, remove the rocks, do a bunch of stuff. Your other option was to seam the liner, but seaming the liner with all those folds and stuff would have been a real nightmare. So let me show you what we did and how we're checking to make sure we're okay. So you can see Chris has got a level on top of this stone here. He's got that perfectly level. Now he's measuring the distance from that rock there down to that one and you're at seven inches. Yeah, just over seven. Seven. And so on the back side, at the same level, the bottom of our liner is about two and a half inches. Yep. So we've got about a four and a half. Five and I really said we wanted a six Six inch drop. We might even want to take this liner and get a little bit more soil underneath there just to get it that much higher. So what I'm more worried about is a four inch drop would actually be all right, but you're not just looking at the height of this. With a big pump on there, water is going to pool up even higher than that. So we've got two pumps going to this just because we want to see what it looks like. And with two five to nines, which is totally overkill, but we're just bored and we want to see what it looks like. With two five to nines, that water is probably going to get at least three quarters of an inch thick. So you're actually up another inch here, which can cause a challenge. The other area you worry about with that stuff are these little pockets here. So as we come down into here, this liner obviously overlapped going down over my other liner. But you see right here, this is that overlap. And yes, it's down far enough. But if this is sealed up too good right here, what happens is if water can't escape through this hole, water starts pooling up. As that water starts pooling up in this area, it gets under underneath this liner, which then would wick out and come out over here, which is even lower. So I gotta get all of this up really high in here to make sure that doesn't happen. And even if this is high, this is still low. So really what we need to do is kind of open this up a little bit more. We'll seal up here really good, but not down below it. What I would never wanna do is foam all of this in here. Basically, if I sealed all this up, that would be like putting a plug in there, not allowing water to escape out there, which then causes it to pool up, get underneath this liner, and and then leak out back through here. So we've got to keep that open. So we went ahead just to get it higher. We raised this rock three inches, got some shims underneath there, then added three more inches of soil here. But I think we still have enough real estate from the height of this to add another inch of soil in here without the gravel looking weird coming over the top. That's what we're gonna do, and then we'll get it set. Hopefully that helps you guys someplace down the future. It's just those leaks. I would love to say we've never built a water feature without a leak, but we've done that before and we can avoid that mistake for you guys then cheers
right, so we fixed the liner up above. We got that thing a good six inches higher than our lower spill stone. Now we're building our last waterfall. I thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of just share with you our vision and what we're thinking about when we're building these things. We've obviously got water that's gonna come over this one. We've got water that's gonna come over this one here. We're always throwing levels on everything just to make sure things are leaning the right way. With this rock here, it's a little tricky because we have this natural high side here. It's really low, like right in here, and then it's naturally high over there. So when I put a level across, actually what I do, I'll show you. So if I put a level across like that, I can actually take a tape measure if I really wanted to and measure down the different areas and know where my water is gonna be the thickest. You can see that this area right in here is probably the lowest, which I actually like quite a bit because then what you don't see is this area right here comes back up and water is probably gonna come over this and almost give this little like horse tail like whoop drop here and then it's really low over in here so water's gonna crash and crash. I just know this because of experience and seeing a bunch of different things. We'll never get water all the way up that high in there in between this gap and that gap. Everything's gonna stay basically between here and about there. And so that's looking really, really good. I'm excited to actually see what that looks like with the two pumps on there, and it should look incredible with just one. Then we came up here and we set this other one. Now, I put the level on here. You can see it's almost perfectly level, but it's actually pitched slightly that way. Now, I could spend the extra time and go ahead and level that off and get that thing dead level, but for me, having it like a quarter bubble, an eighth of an inch bubble, leaning one way will actually look kind of cool. The water will be a little thicker on one side and a little thinner on the other side. A rule of thumb, when you're trying to calculate how wide a waterfall should be, you want a minimum of a thousand gallons of hour per foot width of waterfall. So that's roughly a three and a half foot waterfall stone. So I'd want at least 3,000, 4,000 gallons of water coming over the top of it. That's the minimum. The rule we use is closer to 1,500 gallons per Per foot width. On commercial type settings, we almost double that. We look at like 3,000 gallons of water per foot width. Backyard 15 is pretty good. So on a three foot wide waterfall stone, I'd want a minimum of 4,500 to 5,000 gallons of water per hour coming over that stone. We've got two 9PLs and we should be okay. But what I'm guessing, a lot more water or a little bit water, it'll be a little thicker on this side because it's slightly leaning that way and a little thinner on this side, which I like, especially with the twists and turns of our waterfall. So so if you look at the way these are shaped, notice how I put that kind of on a 45 degree angle compared to these ones down in here. Each waterfall stone, even though I've got a straight line right up and through here, each waterfall stone is on a completely different angle, making that water twist and turn. If water's thicker on the right side, it'll even give it the appearance that it's twisting that much more. The other thing we did with this waterfall is we set the waterfall stone first rather than the frame rocks. So for this one, we set the frame rock first and then kind of built off of it going this way. Here we set the waterfall stone first, which is actually the easiest way to do it. I set that and then I try to figure out this piece that needs to come into here. So this would be my frame rock and then I need another one there. So the only thing I'm looking for now is something that's slightly taller, probably five inches taller than this stone. Now I could try to match up in the back side over here and because of the flat edge, I'd probably be able to find that, but it always looks better if my frame rock actually sits in front of it. So I'd rather see my frame rock sit here rather than over here. Here looks awesome. All right, but it's always gonna look better if the waterfall stone feels recessed back behind your other frame rocks. And I'll do the same thing on this side. This is probably gonna be a more of a square blocky type piece. Over here, I've got a lot of real estate with my liner, so I'd like to see something kind of come in a little bit bigger, maybe a little flatter up in this area. But both of them should be higher, you know, anywhere from three to five inches higher than the top of this area here. So we've got two more rocks to set to finish the waterfall, and then we have to come in and start doing our little wing walls. Over here, you know, we're looking for that blocky type piece that can fit in here. And I'm okay, like it's okay if it like came down. Some place it's just gotta be higher than this to retain all that water coming over this area. What I don't wanna do is get a piece like this over here and then the same back over here. These rocks should actually look completely different than each other. This could be blocky. This needs to be a bigger massive type piece over here just so we get away from that field goal post. One could be three inches higher. Another one could actually be eight inches higher if you wanted it to. Eight inches seems a little excessive over in here, but it should give it a different type of character. Notice over here, no place do we have two frame rocks. We've got this big one that actually frames out two waterfalls. This big guy frames out that waterfall and this waterfall, but this rock is naturally framed by the high side over here, and this rock here is naturally framed by the high side over here. We don't have that field goal post really anywhere, which is awesome. 
Thank you.